Now, so far we have only used the automatic download from the internet to get data inside the Fibro Trader. If you have the free version of the software or if you have some files already available, then you would also appreciate the option to import data manually. So this is done through the data section here, through the import and export functionality. And this little section now will cover how to use these modules. Uh, let me minimize the Fibro Trader shortly and we will come back to it later. Let me show you first of all how you can get some data and a great source is Yahoo and the finance section of Yahoo. So let's go to the to the main page when you're on the Yahoo main page and also on your country page from Yahoo. You also have the same structure so you usually have some finance section. You click on finance. You're, you're interested in some values. Let's say uh, we want to go for the NASDAQ and there you have some components and the components for the NASDAQ for example you have these uh, 2600 values I pick any now let's pick Adobe and we click on Adobe and we have this historical price section here when we click on it we will see a table right in the browser we can select the date range data is available up to 1986 which is which is great and when you go all the way to the bottom then you see a download to spreadsheet option and let's click this and um, let's save it and let's say it's Adobe I already have an ASCII folder so this come will come in handy later on Adobe save and I saved it locally in my file system and now I can go to the data menu select import ASCII file and in this ASCII file I can actually now select the file which I just downloaded I click on choose I go to my ASCII folder and there we have Adobe so I click on Adobe and um, I have end of day selected actually this is automatically selected because what already happened in the background is the quoteman read the file and checked if it can detect what type of information is stored in there. So there's a very complex and very f uh, sophisticated logic in here which you don't even see but which will simplify your life a lot. So let's say I selected a file end of day is correct and then I have some preferences and these preferences let's go from top to bottom first of all there's the option quotes with no symbol will have the following symbol so this means if there is nothing in here which where the, the quote man can derive a name from then we can manually assign a symbol since we have a file name the file name will be used as the symbol name so this is quite useful let's have it deactivated we want to have it stored under ADBE and we'll find the data there we can quickly check in the securities administration if this already exists let's go to ADBE Adobe systems is already in here but no data is available at all records found is zero okay let's minimize it it's down here or well, let's not minimize it let's just close it and reopen it later on then we can define that the new symbol should be saved in one of our folders and this is a good idea I already have a uh, my, po my portfolio folder and let's see what is currently in there we open the Fibber Trader go to symbols my portfolio is currently empty so this is a good place to look for it's quite nice we can delete existing quotes since there are no quotes we can ignore this otherwise I would recommend it because um, the file will then overrule what you already have stored in your database only import quotes for symbols which exist in the database this is a good option for if you have a file which contains information for several symbols currently we have one file per symbol but of course you can only also have data where you have a huge file 
and a huge list of different uh, symbols and prices attached and dates and if you only care for those which you have in your database then the import is also faster um, otherwise it will create those symbols on the fly and it's also quite handy so either way is possible and finally you can have some error detection so if you have prices which are zero or smaller than zero, or zero you can filter those out of course if you're, if you're importing some other information than stock prices like you could import temperature degree information or you can import indicator values or anything like that this doesn't always make sense so it's deactivated by default but you can have this and then it will automatically filter out those incorrect values now we have to find the file and some preferences now the second important step are the fields and when we go to fields this means what are the columns in our text file and first of all our text file has a format and the format um, is automatically detected when loading the file we can redetect it stays the same of course and um, this automatically detected uh, format is suggested as follows we have a separator between the fields which is the comma we want to skip one line and we have this date format and no time information let's check if this is really true so we can click the little show button here and it will open the file in Microsoft Excel and what we can see is yes um, there is a comma between the individual columns that's correct skip lines one means it detected there is some non-price information in the first line exactly true because it is the information about the columns so this should be skipped there is no information to be imported and then we start in the second line and the date format is there is a year number which has four digits a month number which has two digits this is by mm and date and the day which has two digits separated by dashes so the format is detected correctly the quote will detect a huge array of formats huge array of time formats it automatically assigned the columns and split them for us in a little preview section so you should always check if this preview is correct so we see the date is here open high low close volume seems to be detected perfectly if you want to change something we can actually click on the columns and select a different one so we could actually say um, no this is not the open it's the high and this is something else but of course we know this is correct because also there's open high low close volume written here if we don't care for a column in a file we can we can put the non-applicable option here and then will simply be skipped because this is the adjusted price and we don't care for the adjusted price because you want the real price so basically all you need to do is you load a file and you click on start the quoteman will do all the rest automatically for you okay let's start it so it's done it imported 6200 quotes in less than a second and it shows us into which symbol it was imported okay so it's ADBE let's check ADBE now in the securities administration yes we have 6247 quotes looks perfect let's check now inside of the Fibber Trader if we can actually watch this data or view it and we see in my portfolio was automatically updated um, we now have Adobe systems in here we double click on it check and we have the complete history up until 1986 great tool now imagine you would have had several values which you want to import at once um, because we also have um, five additional ones so we can select AA imported then we can select um, GE imported but the Fibber Trader also supports a wildcard so you can say okay um, I want to download every file which ends with CSV so simply select star you click start okay start and you will see it detected six files it will import them it will 
import the data and it will then update your portfolio with these new imported values. And amazingly enough, it downloaded or it imported around uh, 30,000 quotes in around five seconds. And now you can see you have these symbols available here in your portfolio with data coming from uh, the files which we downloaded from Yahoo. So easy as that. Simply click and you're up and running. Now, if we have our settings like we want them and we want to save them for all the future, we can also use the template functionality so we don't have to readjust the columns if we have some more difficult format. And also templates have the advantage that we can reuse them later on in a different data source, which is called ASCII directory. So this will come in a section later on when we talk about ASCII directory data sources. So let's save the current template as, a, let's say, Yahoo format, click OK. Then we have the option to save the path to the source file. Um, typically, the answer is no here because we want to be able to import any format. But if we specify yes, it will always import from this location. can also be a use case which is um, not too uncommon. So this is it. Now we have the Yahoo format template up here. And um, that's actually everything you need to know about the ASCII import. So let's minimize the Fibber Trader again. Let's get rid of the security administration and see what other things we can do with the import and export.